Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. Children, today we will be doing a new lesson in standard 5th. Subject is a scholarship and we will be doing scholarship for English. Okay. And what is the lesson that we are going to do? We are going to start with the next lesson in our portion. That is lesson number 3.4, verbs conjugation. Now there are two words over here. One is verbs and the other one is conjugation. So now children let us think a little bit about what we have learnt in the previous lessons here. So we have talked about adjectives, we have talked about pronouns, we have talked about parts of speech in general. Why? Because we are doing the third unit, isn't it? We are talking about grammar and in this particular lesson we will be moving on and we will be doing or we will be talking about verbs. Now, we will be looking at what verbs are in general and what is the meaning of conjugation of verbs. Alright, and then finally what will we do? We will try and we will do many exercises based on the questions which are going to be asked in your exam. So, this is what we have lined up for you today. Now children, let me tell you one more thing. Now, what is the meaning of conjugation? Conjugation means fusion or coming together of things. Alright. So, now what are we going to talk about when we say conjugation of verbs? We are going to talk about how the verb merges with the subject in a sentence. That is, in English we have different uh, persons. That is, we have the first person, second person, third person. And for each person, we have the singular and plural also. So, we will talk about how verbs change, how verbs merge or how they change their form as far as the different persons are concerned. So, that is why we will be talking about verbs conjugation. Okay. So, like I told you in the beginning, we are just going to take a look at the various uh, parts of speech. That we already know all these. And we have already talked about noun and adjective and today we will talk about verb. Okay, so this is the next part of speech that we are learning that is verb. Now let's take an example and understand what the meaning of verb is. So a word which is used to describe an action, a state or occurrence and forming the main part of the predicate in a sentence such as hear, become, happen. So all these are verbs. So what have we just read out? I have just read out the meaning of a verb for you. So what is a verb? A verb is a word. And what is this word used for? It is used for describing an action, a state or an occurrence and it is part of the predicate in a sentence that is it tells you what the subject in the sentence is doing and various examples of verb could be hear, become, happen etc. Alright so verb means action or it also means a state. So let us take a look at some example sentences. So, Anthony is throwing the football. So, what is Anthony doing? He is doing the action of throwing the football. So, throwing here is an example of a verb. So, the word throwing is a verb. Let's take one more example. She accepted the job offer. So, what did she do? She was offered a job and she accepted it. So, her action was what? Accepting the job offer. Let's take a look at the next example. He thought about his stupid mistake in the test. So, he thought. 
Now, when he thought, did he do something with his hands and legs? No, he used his mind. So, even your actions using your mind are also verbs. Okay. So, now you can see throwing. When you throw means you actually use a part of your body. But when you think, he thought, what did he do? He used his mind. Alright. So, even that is a verb. Then John visited his friend for a while and then went home. What did John do? He visited his friend. Friend. So, here visited could be one verb and went, go, went is one form of, it is the past tense of go. So, that could also be a verb. And finally, we have one more sentence, the dog ran across the yard. So, what did the dog do? It ran. Okay. So, here ran is a verb. So, you see certain words which are used to depict action are called as verb. They could be physical action or it could be something which your mind does. Alright. So now these are all verbs which show action. Now like I told you, verbs can also show state of being or verbs can also show an occurrence. Okay. So let us take a look at some more verbs then. So these are all verbs which show action. All these verbs describe action of the subject. Moving on, let's talk about state of being verbs. Now, they are also called as inactive or linking verbs. What do they do? They explain the situation. That is the way they are and the changes in those situations. So, verbs which are not active, when no one is actually doing anything, is called as state verbs. Okay, they are also called as linking verbs. Now, when I uh, show you certain examples, you will understand this better. Now, there are mainly eight state of being verbs which are very commonly used. So, the number of action words, verbs is, it is a very big exhaustive list. Okay, it is not possible for us to read all the action verbs today in one lesson. But, when we talk about state of being verbs or state verbs, we have eight of them. So, come on, let's take a look at the eight state verbs using some examples. So, the first one is, is. He is a basketball player. It is a puppy. So, see, it is a state of being. What is he? He is a basketball player. Is he doing something right, that, right then? No. He is not playing basketball, but we are saying that he is a basketball player. It is a puppy. So, is is one of the more commonly used state verbs. Then you have am. I am a rapper. I am a social reformist. I am a teacher. I am a student. So, it shows your state of being. What are you? You are a student. I am a teacher. So, am is one more state verb. We come to the third one which is are. Now see, when I say am, I use it for singular. I am. I am, I am saying. Okay? But when we say are, we use it not only for plural, but we also use it for someone else. So, we are beautiful souls. They are politicians. So see, we are using the word are, which is a state verb. Coming to the next state verb which is was. He was a thief. It was a murder. Now again if you notice we have learnt enough grammar till now to understand that is is in the present tense and was is in the past tense. Okay. Then we go to the next one were. We were soldiers who fought in the war. They were nuns. So again was is singular, whereas were is plural. Alright. The next state verb is be. Now, be has got various other forms also. Will is a form of be. Shall is a form of be. You will be cruel. I shall be an entrepreneur. So, these are the six state verbs. Now, I told you we have eight. So, let's look at the seventh one. Bin. I have been to the deserted place. 
have you been through the suffering it is b double e n but we don't say been what do we say the pronunciation is been i have been to the deserted place have you been through the suffering so been here is one more state verb coming to the last one we have being he was being cynical we were being noisy all right so these are the main eight or we can say commonly used state verbs is am are was were be been or being and being sorry all right so these are the state verbs so now you know the difference between action verbs and state verbs in action verb something is being done either physically or mentally but here you will see nothing is being done as such but it shows you the way things are okay so now we go on and we will move on to the next important part as far as verbs are concerned this is one more thing that you should understand as far as verbs are concerned verbs change okay they change according to the person that is why we are learning about verb conjugation so conjugation means how a verb changes to show a different person tense number or mood isn't it so let's now try and understand what is verb conjugation so verb conjugation refers to how a verb changes to show a different person a mood or number so now what is the meaning of changing and what is the meaning of conjugation i'm sure you will understand when we look at certain examples so let's take a look at the six different persons that we have in english now even though the list may seem long it is very very simple and i have tried to make it as simple as possible for you okay so let's try and understand which are the six different persons in english language so we have the first person singular first person when you're talking about yourself so it is i first person singular is i then second person singular is you you're talking to one person who is someone else not you okay so you have i you have you and then you have third person singular when the first person and second person are talking about another person that another person becomes the third person so third person singular he she it one etc okay so you have first person second person third person singular similarly you have first person plural v v okay plural then you have second person plural you see you never say use you never say y o u s use it is always you whether it is one person or more than one person you all right and then we have the third person plural they so these are the six different persons as far as english language grammar is concerned i you he she it or one and then we you and they so you see the second person singular and the second person plural are the same i becomes we you becomes remains you and he she it becomes they all right so what is an easy way to remember this see there is person 1 and you have singular and plural there is person 2 you have singular and plural there is person 3 and you have singular and plural so these are the six persons as far as english language is concerned and then you will see that the verb changes according to the person and that is called as verb conjugation that is what we are learning now okay so come on let's take a look at how the verb changes according to person but before that we will also see that verbs have three main tenses okay what are the three main tenses of verbs see we have the past tense we have the present tense and we have the future tense or form once again if you start from now then we have the present tense so present tense means what present tense means now 
something which is happening now is the present tense for example i study english what are you doing right now you're watching this video and you're studying english so you can say i study english now something which is the past tense is what it is something which happened before now so anything which happened before this moment is the past tense for example i studied english okay it is gone it is over it is not in the now but it is before now and we have the third tense that is the future tense anything which happens after now is the future tense for example i will study english so present is something which is happening right now past is something which has already happened and future is something which will or might happen in the future okay or after now so these are the three main verbs now this is not all that we have to study verbs the three main verbs are again divided into different forms or different parts let's see what they are within these tenses too there are further subdivisions that tell us whether an action is complete or it is going on within a certain time frame or will happen in the future now within the tenses also you have to understand whether the action is already completed or it is going on or it will happen in the future okay so each of these tenses that is the uh, present tense the past tense and the future tense is also divided again so come on let's see how the division goes so you have the present tense past tense and the future tense and you have all these subdivisions come on let's take a look at them one by one along with the examples so the first is you have the present tense and you have these four types of present tenses the first one is the simple present simple present i play football okay then you have the present continuous tense present continuous tense i am playing football so this action of playing football is still happening okay i am playing football then you have the present perfect tense i have played football have and then you have the present perfect continuous tense which says or the example is i have been playing football okay now what i want you to focus on is the verb conjugation that is you can see how the play becomes playing then it becomes played so see how the verb keeps on changing and that is called as the verb conjugation it changes according to the tense it changes according to the persons now we come to the next tense that is the past tense again we have these uh, four categories the first one is the simple past i played football past continuous is i was playing football past perfect is i had played football and past perfect continuous is i had been playing football okay so you can see how the a verb keeps on changing now here the verb is changing according to the tenses the verb also changes according to the person okay let's see the third tense it is future then you have the various future tenses so the first one is simple future example is i will play football then you have future continuous i will be playing football future perfect i would have played football and future perfect continuous i would have been playing football so these are all 
the changes which might happen which could happen in a verb because of the tenses and we also saw that changes could happen in a verb also because of the person okay in the previous example we saw that also one more easy way in which you can understand tenses so i want you to pause the video here and read this properly so you have the four tenses the simple the present tense the past tense and the future tense and you have the four categories that is the present simple present continuous present perfect and present perfect continuous and this is how it goes he drives a car he is driving a car he has driven a car he has been driving a car so you can see in perfect we have the word has have and had added so when there is has added to the verb it means it is the present perfect tense it could also be the present perfect continuous tense okay when we say had or had been then it is the past and when we say will have then it is the future all right so let's go to the past and see the various forms of past tenses so you have past simple past continuous past perfect and past perfect continuous you can read the examples at leisure okay take your own time and read read the examples then you have the future the same way it is categorized as future simple future continuous future perfect and future perfect continuous okay so these are the different forms of verbs and the tenses and how the verb changes according to the tense and we also saw how the verb changes according to the person all right so this is called as verb conjugation now as we always do the first part of our video is over now we go to the second part of our video where we take a look at the question patterns so you have basically three types of questions which will be asked to you based on this topic the first one is choose <coughs> the correct tense to fill in the blanks okay so you will have a sentence given to you with a blank in it and you will have to choose the correct word the same word might be given to you in different tenses you will have to choose the correct tense pattern 2 goes select the tense from form to which the verbs in the following sentences belong again you have to identify the tense form to which the verbs belong and finally you have the question do as directed so each question will tell you what you are supposed to do so as per the directions in that question you have to solve it so children that is about the question patterns now let us do some examples from each of these patterns so are you ready come on let's start so we have pattern 1 choose the correct tense form to fill in the blanks so this is the sentence for you my grandmother dash some delicious sweets so my grandmother having made some delicious sweets my grandmother has made some delicious sweets my grandmother make some delicious sweets my grandmother have made some delicious sweets so 1 2 3 and 4 which one is the correct answer it is option number 2 my grandmother has made some delicious sweets okay so what will come in the blank has made will come in the blank okay moving on to the next example from the same pattern i dash a sailor for the past 10 years so is it i had been a sailor i was a sailor i has been a sailor or i have been a sailor so for the past 10 years also they are saying so you don't know whether it is actually in the past tense or still you are a sailor so which will be the correct answer it will be option number 4 i have been a sailor for the past 10 years 
Now, when you talk about he children, if you talk about second person singular, then it will become he has been a sailor. So, you see how the verb conjugates or how the verb changes. Alright, coming to the next example. So, here it is, I have been a sailor for the past 10 years. Coming to example 3. Long before bedtime, Rahul dash his homework. So, long before bedtime, Rahul will have completed his homework, will complete his homework, will be completing his homework, will have been completed his homework. So, now we are talking about a prediction. That is, we are talking about Rahul and we are talking about his homework and we are talking about bedtime. So, bedtime is still a long time away. So, we are predicting that long before bedtime, Rahul will have completed his homework. Okay? So, we, this is a prediction that we are making. So, the answer is will have completed and that is answer number 1 or option number 1. Coming to the second last example in this pattern, we have the question, the baby is not well, it dash all morning. So, the baby is not well, so it has cries all morning, it is crying all morning, it has been crying all morning or it had cried all morning. So, I told you when we use the word has and been, what is it? What kind of word will it be? It is a first one, second one, third one or fourth one. Which tense will it be? It will be the third one. It has been crying all morning. It is the present perfect continuous tense. So, the baby is not well. It has been crying all morning. So, the action is still going on. It started in the past, but it is still going on. Okay. Coming to the last example here. He dash long before we arrived. So, he, what happened to him? He was leaving long before he arrived. He will leave long before we arrived. He had left long before we arrived. Or he leaves long before we arrived. So, what do you think has happened? Long before you arrived, something has happened. That means it is in which tense? Yes, it is in the past. So, it is he had left long before we arrived. So, it is actually in the past tense. It is the past perfect tense. Had left. Alright. So, this is pattern 1 for you children. Let us move on and go to pattern 2. So, what will the sentence be? He had left long before we arrived. Moving on to pattern, the next one, that is pattern 2. Here comes pattern 2 for you. Select the tense form to which the verbs in the following sentences belong. So, here you have to identify the tense form. Okay? So, this is the sentence. Edison performed various experiments. So, which tense form does the verb performed belong to? So, is it simple present? Is it past perfect? Is it simple future? Or is it simple past? Edison performed various experiments. It is the simple past. So, it is the option number 4. Something which happened in the past, simple past. We are not giving it any other kind of form. Okay. So, Edison performed various experiments is the simple past. Moving on to the next example here. We have example number 7 in this video. They are completing their work in the study room. So, they are completing their work. So, something is happening right now. Okay. So, is it the simple future? Is it the present progressive? Is it the future perfect or the future progressive? So, which tense is this? Something is happening. Means something is in progress. When? Now. They are. 
okay so which tense is it it is the present progressive tense all right coming to the next example i have known it for a long time for how long have you known it for a long time so pay attention to the helping verb have so i have told you when it is have what tense could it be when it is has what tense could it be okay and when it is had what tense could it be so come on think about what tense this could be and let's take a look at the options so is it future perfect is it simple present is it present perfect or is it simple past so when you say have what tense will it be it will be the present perfect tense okay we come to the second last example in this pattern and question number 9 will be he had completed his homework okay or he had completed his work so the word completed has been typed again by mistake so just overlook it all right so let's see he had completed his work is which tense is it past perfect past progressive simple pro future or is it the simple past now the word had has come here we can see the word had so which tense is it yes it is the first one it is the past perfect if it was simple past it would have been he completed his work that's it okay but when we say had completed it is past perfect coming to the last example here in this pattern the train will be arriving soon so the train will be so come on think about it so which is the tense is it future perfect is it future perfect progressive is it simple future or is it future progressive can you see any uh, word like have or had something over here no so it could not be the future tenses of course so then will be arriving means some action will be happening so which tense will it be yes it will be the future progressive tense okay children so this was the second pattern of the question let's now quickly move on and do pattern 3 where we will do as directed so as per the question is telling us we will try and find out the answer so the first question is choose the correct past tense of the following sentence so there is a sentence you have to select which the past tense of the sentence is suresh works hard for the examination so which is the past tense is it suresh is working hard suresh worked hard suresh had worked hard suresh has worked hard so which is the correct answer which is the past tense form it is the second one suresh worked hard for the examination okay the simple past it is not asking us the past progressive or past perfect so we have gone for the second option coming to the next question here in this pattern look at the picture and choose the correct sentence so here we have this picture for you what is happening here there are two monkeys and they doing something they eating they eating what they eating bananas so how will you say this sentence the monkey is eating bananas the monkey is eats bananas the monkeys are eating bananas or the monkeys will be eating bananas so which is the correct option it is the third one the monkeys are eating bananas okay so it is the present continuous tense the monkeys are still eating when you saying the statement we come to the last question for today's video and that is look at the picture and choose the correct sentence here is a picture for you so here is a picture of four boys standing with a trophy that means they have won some kind of a sporting event so let's see which sentence will describe this picture the best so is it 1 2 3 or 4 is it the saint warrior boys won the match the saint warrior boys will win the match the saint warrior boys are won the match 
percent warrior boys winning the match so which do you think is the right answer yes it is the first one because they have already won the match that is why they have the trophy in their hand okay children so this was lesson about verbs conjugation now if you take a look at your scholarship textbook the next lesson is also going to be about verbs where we are going to learn about action verbs and auxiliary verbs so if you understand this lesson well you will understand the next lesson better so what you are supposed to do you are supposed to watch the entire video right till the end okay and then also try to solve the tasks that i have set up for you so children now you have watched the video so after you watch the video now you will have to complete a few simple tasks now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones now after you watch the video what will you do you will please go to the description box which is given below the video so what is the description box see the description box looks like this all right and after you go to the description box you will see that there are a few questions there now what are these questions about these questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched so what will you do you will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want okay after that we have another task waiting you will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the google form so now what is the google form children it is nothing but a simple form there are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself so these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video so children wasn't that a very interesting lesson i'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson if you have liked this video please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which i keep posting regularly